Hello everyone, I'm Sean and I healed myself of leaky gut and insulin resistance. In this video, I'm going to share my experience with the keto diet in my journey of healing from insulin resistance. I will go over the benefits and the negatives that I experienced in my body while on keto. I want to say though that it makes me really sad to see how dogmatized so many diets have become. It's really important to keep an open mind and see the positives and negatives in all diets and judge them based on your own personal experiences. Nothing is 100% good or bad. It just depends on your personal goals. Keto works for a lot of people, but not for everyone. If it works for you, that's great and I'm glad for you. I think it's a useful diet that can be helpful to a lot of people. All right then, so I was diagnosed with insulin resistance in 2018 and the first thing I tried was the keto diet. Of course, there was that 10 day transitional period where I had the keto flu, you know, headaches, body chills, other weird symptoms, but it wasn't that bad though and I quickly got over these symptoms and I was fat adapted. After that, I would start my mornings with a bouillon cube because you need more salt when you're on the keto diet. I would have a three egg omelet with cheese, bacon, veggies, and sour cream on top. For dinner, I would have either steak or salmon with the skin on top with a side of veggies like broccoli or asparagus cooked in butter. I would also often eat things like cheeses. I would make fat bombs with coconut oil, cocoa powder. I would eat nuts. I had tons of recipes and I had a blast always discovering new things to cook and finding cool keto restaurants that I could go to. And most importantly, at that time, I wasn't experiencing any blood sugar spikes. Along with this, I was also seeing other benefits that are often associated with the keto diet like improved concentration and better skin. For a good while, the keto diet was working really well for me. I was so enthusiastic at the time and I introduced the keto diet to my entire family and a lot of friends around me. Actually, one of my buddy's girlfriends is still doing keto to this day. So that brings me to why I stopped doing keto. First off, I'm naturally skinny and keto made me even skinnier. I just kept losing weight regardless of how many calories I was eating and I really tried. I tried consuming like 3000 calories a day with things like coconut milk, red meat, coconut oil fat bombs. My body weight just kept going down though. To some people this might sound amazing but this wasn't my goal. This wasn't why I started doing keto. My main goal was to improve my insulin resistance. A friend of mine who was doing keto with me at the time also lost eight kilograms or around 17 pounds. The next reason I stopped doing keto is because my digestion just kept getting worse. Consuming lots of oils, fats, and nutritionally dense meats was great at first, but after a few months, my stomach felt like it was working overtime all of the time. I remember eating beef night after night for dinner and my stomach just kept getting more and more uncomfortable. During this time, I also remember getting really bloated every time I ate salmon. The worst thing though is when I started to get really bloated after eating broccoli and raw kale. These foods put my stomach in the worst knots ever and it made it really hard to function for that entire day. The last reason was my ability to tolerate carbs wasn't improving. I did keto for around a year and occasionally I would cheat and eat some carbs. And every time I ate a significant amount of carbs, I would have blood sugar spikes. I remember having a big blood sugar spike after consuming sweet potatoes. A small amount of carbs here or there wasn't a problem, but without a doubt, I was still insulin resistant. Keto was also highly inconvenient. I would always have to plan meals, shop at special stores, only go to certain restaurants, and it was difficult to meet and have meals with friends who weren't currently doing keto. I also spent lots of money on high quality cheeses, cured meats, and other supplements. In summary, for me, doing keto long term was inconvenient, expensive, I was losing weight, my digestion was getting worse and worse, and my insulin resistance wasn't healing. I almost felt like I was only avoiding the problem while doing keto. Avoiding carbs wasn't improving my ability to digest them. The main point of this entire video is to say that there could be many reasons as to why keto just doesn't work or it's not feasible for someone who currently has insulin resistance. Soon after, I discovered the work of Weston A. Price. 
He was a dentist who lived around 100 years ago and studied tribes of indigenous people from all around the world, including Europe, North America, Africa, Asia, and Australia. These indigenous people had excellent dental development, great bone structure, and in general were in very good health. He found commonalities that were shared among many indigenous tribes, including some form of liver, fermented foods, and a carb such as potatoes, sourdough bread, or oats. I encourage all of you to study and learn more about Weston A. Price. His findings and research are truly incredible. During my research, I also found that some organs in our bodies actually need glucose, such as our muscles, our eyes, and parts of our brain. People who are on the keto diet often go through gluconeogenesis, where their body takes excess protein and turns it into glucose. Because one way or another, our body absolutely needs glucose. Some doctors think that this process of gluconeogenesis can be stressful on our bodies in the long term, with particular emphasis on our thyroid and our liver. Personally, I started to feel deflated after going without carbs for a long time, in addition to all the other side effects that I mentioned previously. Again though, this is my personal experience. I'm not poo-pooing keto, and I personally know people who are doing really well on keto. Again, I'm just sharing this because I think some people might resonate with my experience. So at this time, my thinking was, carbs are not inherently evil. Instead, I need to improve my ability to digest healthy carbs. So after learning more about Weston A. Price and doing more research on insulin resistance, I decided on a different approach, which was healing my liver fixing my gut, and introducing healthy starches into my diet, of course mixed with high quality animal fats and protein. The first step, heal my liver. Our livers have over 500 different functions in the body. One of them is to digest fructose, fat, and to help regulate blood sugar. A lot of diabetics and people suffering from insulin resistance have weak or fatty livers. Our livers have an undeniable role in insulin resistance and blood sugar regulation. To heal my liver, I consumed beef liver, real food liver supplements, egg yolks, and other dairy. To heal my gut and digestion, I consumed homemade chicken broth, which is loaded with gut healing collagen. Collagen, by the way, is the building block for the cells in our body, and the correlation between gut health and insulin resistance has been well documented. If you want to learn how to make healthy, gut-healing chicken broth, watch this video I made here. Also, I started to slowly incorporate fermented foods like kefir and kimchi. These improved my microbiome and introduced tons of minerals and vitamins crucial for healing the organs in my body and healing my insulin resistance. I'll link a study below on the benefits of fermented foods in regards to insulin resistance. Finally, I started incorporating organic potatoes and fermented oats. Of course, I mix the potatoes with good fats like ghee, butter, or sour cream, and I usually consume my oats with kefir or yogurt. Slowly but steadily, my digestion improved, my energy improved, and my ability to digest carbs slowly improved. These days, I usually stick to fermented oats for breakfast mixed with kefir or some other form of yogurt or dairy, and potatoes for dinner with meat and some other kind of animal fat. I feel very healthy these days, and I can even cheat from time to time when traveling or when meeting friends. In conclusion, my goal wasn't to avoid carbs and lose weight, but rather heal the organs in my body and improve my ability to tolerate healthy carbs. In the end, it all depends on your personal goal. Keto has a lot of value for many people. Personally, I saw some benefits and I learned a lot about my body and nutrition in general while doing it. Ultimately though, it's not what healed my insulin resistance, and I don't believe keto or any form of low carb diet is the only way to deal with insulin resistance. So that's all. I really hope you found value in me sharing my experience. Also, I need your guys' help. 
I'm currently developing a program about insulin resistance and I'm doing research right now. I'm trying to just talk to a few people, find out your current pain points regarding insulin resistance. So I'm looking to hop on a Zoom call for maybe 10 to 15 minutes and just ask you like eight to 10 questions, find out your specific story. If you're interested in helping me out, just uh, click the link down below. It'll be my Calendly link. You can just sign up for a session, a time slot, and we can just hop on Zoom and just talk about your current experience. I'm not selling anything at the moment. If I do, I will definitely announce that on the channel. But yeah, if you can help me out, that would be fantastic. All right then, thank you so much for watching guys. Once again, I'm Sean. Subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.